Hey, what's up, everybody? Who's on the call today? I see Mickey. How you doing, Mickey? What up, Terry Samuels? How's it going? Hope it's not too hot out there these days. Hi, Barton. Jenna, sorry. Hey, Shane is back. Hey, Alexander. Gregory saying hello from hot Atlanta, 91 degrees. Right on, right on. It's nice and cool today in Texas, kind of cloudy. Had a little bit of rain. I think it's around 69 degrees. Jamaica, hot, hot, hot. Cool, it's good to see you, Larry. How you doing, David? Good to see you. Steve, how's it going? What up? Uh, hi, you, Kevin Butler. Hey, hey, Tim. Simba from South Africa. Good to see you, Simba. Raphael, good to see you too, bro. Hey, Tim. Where's, where's all the Canadians? There's one right there. How you doing, Kelly? Hey, Kelly. I'm down in Belmont right now. Tim from Germany. Right on, right on. Fitz I, can see, from I can see Thomas from Manchester. I was born in Manchester, Hope Hospital. So probably too, pretty close to where Thomas is at. Right on. How you doing, Thomas? Phil from the UK as well. Leonardo, Colombia. Cool. I was talking about Colombia last weekend with uh, Diggy. He and I are going to plan a trip to Medellin someday. Cool, cool, cool. How you doing, Doug? How's Tampa? Uh, you guys dry out in there? Uh, you and you Floridians got your internet back? I hear it's spotty in places, but I hear it's getting a lot better. How you doing, Rick from Sydney? Paul from AZ, Melissa from New Orleans. How you doing, Melissa? Good to see you. Kelly? Hey, Clay. How's it going? Murray, how are you? Eric from Fraggle Rock, England. Cool, cool, cool. Never heard of that before. Fraggle Rock. Right on. Hey, no, I haven't even. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, you guys can hear Matthew there in the background. He is originally from the UK as well. Uh, Ontario in the house. How you doing, Eric? And uh, can't, not sure if, uh, how to pronounce this name very well, but uh, how you doing? Ipai. Uh, cool. From Melbourne. Right on, right on. Uh, how you doing? Uh, Stu from Spruce Grove. Hollywood, Florida. How you doing, Roberto? John, John from South Wales. Cool, cool, cool. Ah, there is our resident Hawaiian from Maui. How you doing, Tim? Good to see you. Yes, you are correct, Kevin. Thanks for being here. Dennis, upstate to New York, and yes, Herc, did you press the record button? <laughs> yes, yes, I did Herc. today. Yes, I just reminded him before we started. I wasn't here. I'm usually the reminder of that, and I apologize for missing yesterday, but I was having some um, technical difficulties, as many of you may know, that I was dealing with. So I had to take care of that for all you guys, uh, so I was not able to be on the call yesterday. I do apologize. I will be there next week. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, but that webinar, just just real quick to that guys, that webinar is already up. The re, somebody sent me the replay, and I was able to put it up. So it's yesterday's Cert Tech people. It's in your Cert yes. Tech members area. Yes, yes it was salvaged. Hey Connor, hey Hayden from SoCal. Palatine in the house, Kath. Did I say that right? Palatine. Palatine. What state is that in? I can't remember. Uh, so, so you guys keep bringing good stuff. It helps my biz. What's this one going to be? <laughs> All right, Steve, we're going to get to that in just a second. I still see people typing in here. People are still piling on. Uh, we're in triple digits now. Very, very cool. It's going to be a packed house. Okay. Right on, MJ. Just same type, and we will... Get to Kevin. I knew when you said Freckle Rock, I thought that's what you were talking about, but I didn't want to uh, compare the two. Yeah, Jim Henson. I remember that show. That that was quite quite a few years ago. <laughs> Very cool. It makes me laugh. Um, hi there, Wayne from Manchester. Cool, cool, cool. More more Manchester. Um, yeah, all yes, the troublemakers are in the house, huh? Mm -hmm, looks like it. Looks like it. What's up, Jeremiah? How is it going? Roberto says, huge fan of Matthew Woodward. Right on, right on. Most of the software I bought and learned were because of his video tutorials. Absolutely, Roberto. I feel the same way. I've been following him for a very long time myself. Um, it always puts out great stuff. And you're going to see some more great stuff again today. Welcome, welcome. Okay. 
Palatine. Got it, Kath. Thank you very much. It's when you get the right one. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> cool, Steve. And Val from Baltimore, Maryland. How you doing, Val? Good to see you. Good to see you. Anybody else out there want to say hello? Anybody out there first time they've ever been on a supremacy webinar? Give me a one first time you've ever been on a supremacy webinar. It's always somebody, but we'll check today. Yep, there's the one. How you doing, Leonardo? Good to see you. Welcome. Glad you could be here and join us for this today. All right, we're exactly eight minutes past the hour, so we are going to get started very, very soon. Just reading some more comments here. Hello, Hector. Welcome from Colombia, South America. I just love how our audience is so worldwide. It always, uh, always just just uh, gives me a good feeling that we're reaching so many parts of the world, and that's awesome to see. So awesome. All right, guys. So what we're going to do today is uh, we brought a very, very, very special guest, uh, Mr. Matthew Wolf Woodward. And if if you've been in the SEO space for uh, you know over the last uh, five or six years, then then you you probably ran across some of Matt's tutorials online. He ranks for so many different uh, tutorials and, 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 and advice and products and just all kinds of things. If you've ever visited his blog, it's just absolutely incredible. I've been a huge, huge fan uh, of, of Matt for a very, very long time. Uh, we've spoken several times in the past and then uh, more recently we've been communicating a lot more and we thought we'd bring him on today to uh, go over what uh, what he's going to be bringing out pretty soon about how to build and maintain PBNs. And I know PBNs is a uh, very, very uh, uh, hot topic that we get all the time. And, and as a matter of fact, Herc and I were uh, planning on putting out a, a course on uh, PBNs. As you know, I've done one in the past, but it's, uh, it, was, it was a few years ago. Uh, so we were going to do a new one with a lot of the new uh, things that we do, the new tips and tricks that are, are needed to, uh, to carry out and execute a successful PBN. Um, however, uh, we, me and Herc are pretty busy these days, and um, we decided to, uh, to bring Matt on uh, and, and teach you guys a lot of stuff and go over a lot of content and uh, show you guys where to get some free videos on how to um, build, maintain, and execute a proper PBN. Uh, so we won't be on there too long, too long, guys, today, probably uh, less than an hour. So uh, less than an hour, we will be uh, in and out of here, and uh, we hope you guys take a lot of notes and uh, learn a lot of cool things about how to build a proper PBN, and we all know how powerful uh, those PBNs can be. We all know that, you know, building Surftech sites, you get a lot of page one rankings uh, really, really quickly. And, and even in, even in your own you know on your own on page SEO sites using project supremacy and stuff you're gonna get some uh, some page pretty quickly but then again we do also know that there are um, certain terms that uh, do require backlinks and the most powerful backlinks you can get are ones coming from those powerful PDFs so that's what this is all about today uh, we're gonna be flooding you guys with content uh, over the next few days on this so uh, hope you guys enjoy all right without further ado I believe we've already got a Good mic check in since I've heard everybody speaking loud and clear. Uh, so uh, just real quick again, Herc, are you still with us? Yes, I'm really. <laughs> I'm still here. Okay, cool. Do you would you like to add anything to that intro there, or are we good to go? Um, let's just go. Let's just learn about PDNs. I, I will add this. Uh, yesterday on the Surf Tech webinar, I know not everybody was on it, but yesterday we kind of dove into PDNs a little bit. How to backlink SERP tech sites and why to backlink SERP tech sites. And I told you guys yesterday that I don't really want to teach you about PBNs. I will give you the overview of how to backlink, presuming that you had a PBN or access to a PBN. But today is all about PBNs. I have taken Matt's course, I've taken his training on PBNs. I'm 100% confident this guy knows his shit. So um, you guys are going to get a lot of great information and. Uh, Make sure if you are, uh, if you don't pay attention, come back and watch a replay and shit. Just pay attention, guys. This is this is going to be good stuff, and and I know everyone's been waiting for it. Yeah, I'd like to add. I, I took his uh, his course as well uh, last year. It's been uh, it's been updated a lot since then, but uh, absolutely uh, uh, great information. So uh, let's uh, without further ado, Matthew, are you there? 
Can everybody hear me? I am indeed, and ready to rock and roll. Okay, you have the screen in just a moment. Okay. Um, let's see. Do you see my blog? Yes, we do. Excellent. Okay, so thank you all for joining today. Um, I guess a lot of you know who I am, but some of you won't. Um, my name's, well, Matthew Woodward. I run the SEO blog you see on your screen now, um, which actually I launched a few years ago. It's now made over a million dollars and helped a bunch of people um, solve their problems online. Um, very luckily, it has also won a, a lot of awards over that time, which you can see here. And um, really the most important thing is the feedback and testimonial testimonials you'll get and um, you can see here people are getting real results um, and sharing their stories of how my tutorials have helped them to grow so um, today we're going to talk about private blog networks now I think the audio just went out on Matt. He's actually in Costa Rica, so the internet down there is possibly not as good. I don't know if you can hear me, Matt, but your audio is out at the moment. Just when we were about to get into it. <laughs> I don't know if audio is so good, right? Yeah. Okay, hello? There you go. Uh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. I pu I, uh, I pulled the cable on the on the headset. <laughs> um, okay. So I've introduced myself. I'm going to talk to you today about private blog networks. Um, I've got a lot of experience here. Um, I'm also going to introduce you to some case studies along the way. And at the end of the video, I'm going to at the end of the webinar, sorry, I'm going to completely blow your mind with some of the case studies I'm going to introduce to you. Um, so I have a four-part um, training series um, that teaches everything you need to know about private blog networks. I'm sure the guys will be sharing the links uh, with you to download that. Um, and right now the first and second videos are available. The third video will be released tomorrow. It's completely free. Um, and the fourth video on Monday. But right now the first and second video are available. And in this webinar I'm just going to give you uh, an overview of the two videos. And then if you sign up to, 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 to get the free series, you'll also get the, the record. Well, you, you'll get the actual videos, which I highly suggest you watch alongside with this webinar to, to really absorb as much information as possible. Um, so, let me interrupt one second. Just sorry, guys. We are going to give everyone on the webinar access to um, Matt's uh, four free videos, guys. But we're gonna we're gonna cover information first. So don't worry about going and searching for a link. We will pass that out. But you're also going to get a few uh, surprise bonuses um, along with that link. So just just pay attention for now, and we'll get you uh, the link for the free training as well as those surprise bonuses at the end of the way, guys. And there's nothing for sale today. All free. Yeah, I want to stress that the 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 four, the four free videos when you're going to get the link at the end will give you everything that you need to know to rank a site in Google, um, and you'll go behind the scenes with me on on, on a lot of different things. Um, so the, the 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 first video, um, it, it just give me a shout out in the questions. Who already knows what a PBN is? Uh, a, a number one, and if you're new to this, a number two. And based on these responses, it's kind of going to sim decide what I explain next. Okay, we've got quite a seasoned PBN crowd, it will seem, just a couple that aren't aware. Okay, so for the couple of people that aren't aware, a private blog network is essentially a collection of websites that you own and control and usually they're in the same niche. For example, if you have a blog in the travel niche and you want to rank it, you will buy other domains and websites related to the travel niche that have existing SEO authority. Then 
you're going to place links on those sites to your own site in order to manipulate the rankings and um, increase your overall search traffic. So in essence, we are owning and controlling our links. Now, why I like private blog networks is the most powerful type of link you can build is from a relevant piece of content and uh, also from a relevant domain. And private blog networks really give you full control of everything end to end in terms of rel relevancy, authority, power, everything is in your complete control. So for the people that didn't know what PBNs are, I, 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 I hope that wasn't too much of a, of a too much of a knowledge dump for you to digest um, when I'm talking when I'm talking about them. Now, one of the things I um, will cover in video one, and some of you may be familiar with, you have to excuse my stupid pause face right here, um, is that there's really two types of private blog networks, and people don't separate. The, what pe people fail to disting distinguish between the two different types of private blog network. So I want to just kind of put the argument to rest that there's a private blog network and if you see something advertised on Black Hat World or in forums selling pri private blog network links, that's not a private blog network at all. There's nothing private about it. It's completely public completely accessible and it comes with a certain level of risk. The other type of private blog network is a private blog network that we're going to be talking about today and I'm guessing a lot of you already try and build and that's a truly private blog network that you only use to rank your own sites and nothing more and nothing less. You don't let anyone else build links on it, you don't link to anyone, you just use it for you. Now a lot of you will have probably heard in, um, well, it, it happens every couple of months. If you read any popular SEO blogs um, or, you know, anywhere like Search Engine Journal and so forth, that every couple of months Google goes out and hammers and completely de-indexes and penalizes anybody that's using a private blog network. Now, what's actually happening in these situations is that Google are going out and, pub and penalizing the private blog networks that aren't really private. These are the guys that are selling links on forums and you, you, you just jump onto Black Hat World, go on the buy and sell links things and probably half of the threads that you see on your screen are going to be people selling links on their supposedly private blog network. So we want to make sure that we stay away from all of that. And the reason is Google targets those specifically knowing that if they target private blog network sellers, all the people that have their sites ranked by those private blog networks will then in turn go back to forums and say how private blog networks are dead and really risky and you should never use them and so forth. And um, that's a very effective tactic by Google because well, humans all have a natural fear in all of us and um, when something like that happens, we're very quick to just kind of throw around the private blog network term without really making the distinction uh, between a truly private blog network and a actual like public private blog network. So um, I don't know how many of you guys on the webinar have been doing SEO, but who remembers Authority Link Network and Build My Rank back in 2012, something like that? And SEO Link Monster too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, if you if you Google that, I rank number one and uh, didn't give them a favourable review. Um, but, but Build My Rank and Authority Link Network in 2012. Some of you remember it. For those that don't, they were essentially a huge public private blog network, and people were absolutely slamming the rankings. You could just submit. 200 words of text with a 100% exact match anchor text. You could like bulk upload a spreadsheet and do like 300 links in one go and everyone was crushing it and like it was absolutely insane. And um, what happened is that Google came along and de-indexed both, well, Authority Link Network, Build My Rank, SEO Monster, and, um, and there was one over at the time, the name escapes me right now. Um, 
and Google destroyed not only the networks but all of the sites that they were linking to as well. So the knock-on effect of that was, um, and, and you can probably find this if you go and search in the forums history, is that literally overnight people were like, private blog networks are the best thing in the world. And then the next day they were like, oh my God, they're the worst thing ever. And people were, were very suddenly terrified of using their most powerful weapon. And um, in that moment, there, there, was, there was kind of a separation where the experienced SEOs took advantage of the power of observation. And they kind of understood that um, by watching the the, the action that Google took, Google took such a harsh action at such a high level that the experienced SEOs understood quite how powerful private blog networks were and actually it was Google that was terrified of them, um, not the people in the forums that had been penalized. So um, back then I kind of understand it well, Google's just disarmed my competitors of their most powerful ranking weapon. But at the same time, to me and to, and to some other SEOs, um, they kind of highlighted the importance of building your own truly private blog network because we'd seen how powerful like a really badly built, highly spammed public network was. So when you see Google taking down private blog networks, they're not actually taking down private blog networks, not truly private blog networks like we're going to build and talk about they're taking down the, 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 the public guys and uh, trying to spread that fear factor and, 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 and have everyone running and screaming of something that actually Google are terrified of. Um, I don't mean to babble on about SEO history, but it, 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 it might be quite interesting to some of you. And uh, one of the biggest advantage is I have as an SEO is, first of all, I've been doing it for a long time, but second of all, I fully employ the power of observation. And as you can see, when Google are penalizing something, in general, that means it works really well. And you, you should pay attention to that. Um, so I'll give you another example of that. Over time, you start to recognize patterns in Google's behavior. And you start to kind of learn how to take advantage of those patterns. And just with, just like with private blog networks, supposedly private blog networks, they also did the same with forum profiles, blog comments, article directories, and guest posts. Most recently, the, 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 the penalized guest posts again. Um, but really what they did is, um, again, in 2014, Google said they were going after guest posts. The people that built links with guest posts were getting penalized. Well, that didn't really happen. Um, what they actually went and did is took down big guest posting networks like my blog guest and post joint. Um, but the problem that you had then was a lot of SEOs were running to forums saying guest posting is dead, blah, 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 blah. But really Google hadn't taken down guest posts at all, just a couple of networks. Um, so I hope you see that pattern there. Um, what about you guys? Uh, Todd, Herc, have you, have you recognized any of Google's patterns over the years? Hey, sorry, <laughs> I wasn't, uh, wasn't muted. Um, the one I always talk to people about is like when we see these things happen, um, there's always, there, there is patterns, but like the th it's kind of a side point, but it's like I never react to patterns. And I always teach people this. It's like you sit back, you let all the other people make all their reactions and their judgments, and you go watch the SEO forums and shit like that. And you, you let them make the changes and they come back and they feed all the information back to you on what's happening, what the update's about like that. Then if there's something you need to change, then you can. But uh, that's that's how I've always dealt with uh, these big Google changes and shit. And I've survived tons of all the sh all the shit. Like even the SEO hosting stuff, I've survived stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not doing yeah, anything. It's, it's easy to get distracted with a, a knee-jerk reaction. Um, and often it's better just to take a step back, look at the bigger picture, and, and understand what's going on, uh, and, 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 and it's, it's almost a political game that Google plays in many ways. Um, but once you understand that, you can kind of rise above it and learn how to, 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 to take advantage of that. Um, and that's essentially what I understood with private blog networks back when they, and, and still quite aggressively go after private blog networks, and, and they're, they're very heavy on their PR about going after private blog networks, which actually just tells me we should be building more private blog networks. Um, 
so uh, yeah there's a, there's a lot of fear about private blog networks a lot of you guys already know this but the risks involved when you build a truly private blog network that you control and you're in 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 in, in full response fully responsible bleh, fully responsible for the the risk is minimal next to zero and even if the worst case scenario happened well you're in control of everything so you can you can clean up your link profile very 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 easily in seconds um, you know if you've got over optimized anchor text you can control that as well um, the private blog networks really give you a level of control um, that no, nothing else does so all of you guys that are building private blog networks, all of you ones out there, um, you'd be amazed at the emails I get when people show me their private blog networks, why they're not working, why they're not ranking, and um, I, I see some common problems and the same mistakes and the same footprints over and over and over again. So, if you already build a private blog network, pay attention because I, well, it's super super rare that I come I look at someone's network and there isn't a problem so pay attention um, I'm going to show you a few of the different mistakes that people fall into and actually when you sign up to the free video series there's a, a checklist of things that you should go through and I highly recommend if you have a network right now you run through that checklist and make sure that your network passes because if it doesn't you're at risk and we want we're in control of that risk there's no need for you to be at risk um, so I have that ready prepared for you I run through this checklist on my own networks look I'm teaching you guys I know what I'm doing I could do this while I'm asleep but quite often when I run through my checklist I find problems so if I'm finding problems with my own network and I know inside out it's, it's very likely that there's, there's some holes um, in your network as well so um, one of the biggest mistakes that I see is people usually take shortcuts in building a network, shortcuts when it comes from the hosting, they get lazy with that, from the content, either auto-generated, spun or pulled from archive, or they usually get lazy like the sites just look like absolute, and a, well there's not a more accurate word, they just look like shit. Um, and, and there's no way these sites would pass a manual review so I'm going to show you how I build private blog networks that not only fly under the radar but could also pass a manual review and that's not just from my own experience but I've, I've helped a bunch of clients and readers do this as well and all of this is explained in, in much greater detail across the video series um, I can see you guys wondering why my screen is not changing um, it's because I don't really have anything too interesting to show you right now. Um, well, we could show you one of the case studies. I promised you a bunch of case studies. So before we dive into looking at some of the problems people have, let me show you the results I've had in one of the networks. I've actually got 11 of these case studies to share with you in total. Um, this one is a case study that's featured in the first video. When you sign up, you will be get access to this case study along with a live look into Google Analytics Google Search Console and this is an e-commerce site in the homeware niche they sell like high-end homeware furniture um, they have some quite serious competitors online they operate in the UK and they're going against some big big brands like IKEA and John Lewis some of you guys will be familiar with those um, so this strategy, the private blog network, and the, the, in, in the way that you're about to learn how to build it, was deployed in March 2015, and you have a little video here that you'll have access to eventually, but traffic essentially went from 12,000 a month to 60,000 a month, but what makes this really interesting is if we were to dive into the e-commerce um, Per, per, per e-commerce report in Google Analytics here you can see at one point this site made nearly a million pounds in month in revenue in November right now that's settled down to about 650,000 pounds a month uh, which is still close to about 800 and 850,000 dollars a month in revenue 
Um, in total, uh, it's made nearly, well, 12, 12, over 12 million pounds, which is nearly 16 million dollars. And you can see the performance here in Google Search Console and not a bad click-through rate and total amount of impressions there. Uh, but ultimately, what matters is this. It's no point getting a lot of traffic if it doesn't convert into money. So that is one of the 11 case studies that I'm going to share with you. And all of the results that you're seeing right in front of you right now are down to a private blog network. So I want to share with you everything I know about building a network. I'm going to give you an overview of the first two videos here and uh, I highly suggest you watch them to to, to get more detail um, because uh, I'm not going to be able to go over everything in this in this webinar and also I've got quite a lot of stuff prepared that's going to help you absorb the information much more in, in the, the actual videos. So the first video is very much the what, the private blog networks, you kind of already all know that. The video two is the how. And this is how I execute the step-by-step -step strategy. And it usually boils down to a three-step process. You guys will be familiar with it, but I'm pretty sure I do things in my own way. And that is just buying a domain, setting up hosting, and then building the site. So it's a pretty easy process end-to-end. -end. And there's, well, there's quite a few pitfalls as you're going along and, and, and sourcing domains for your network and actually building the sites out. So, when you're sourcing domains for your network, it's quite important that, uh, and here you can see my beautiful face pause in video two, uh, and that's actually my office right there. Um, in video two here, we're going to start looking at how to source domains and exactly the, 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 the big gotchas and traps that people fall into when buying their domains. Um, essentially, there's just a few different metrics that we want to look at. And I can pull in a little presentation here. And although there's more metrics to look at when you're buying a domain, um, if you this will give you a, a very good overview of when buying domains for your network. Now, I guess you guys have sources to buy domains from. If not, my favorite tool right now to use to um, to source domains is Expired Domain Hunter. Um, it's, a, it's a desktop tool, it's really cool, it is a premium tool but they have a free trial available and that will be certainly enough for you to find the first few domains in your network without having to separate with any cash for the actual tool yourself. So if you grab a copy of that tool. Um, you can also use moonzy.com, although their list is very limited unless you pay. And um, those two tools will be enough for you to, to, to find the first few domains in your network. Once you uh, have found a domain that you, you, you might want to use in your network, we, we need to carry out some due diligence and checks. Now, the first checks that we like to make are on the metrics, and I'm sure all of these metrics are familiar to you. Domain authority, page authority from Moz, trust flow, and citation flow from Majestic. Now, there are, I, I said it before, there are other metrics that you can check, but for the most part, if you know these metrics, you can be pretty sure that this is going to be a good domain. And there's a few other things that we'll check after once we've uh, pulled down the metrics. But basically can what I we're looking for... here for a sec too? Yeah. Sorry, man. I just want to say this to you guys who really pay attention to the metrics part of this, because not only is um, looking at these metrics for, for purchasing a domain to be used in your PBN a good idea, but if for anyone out there that doesn't really want to buy their own or manage their own PBN and you'd prefer to go out and buy links or rent links from other people, it's just as good information to have. You have to know how to look at a domain and decide whether it's going to be a good domain to get a link from and that applies once again to whether you're buying it to use in your own PBN or if you're going to go out there and rent it. So really, really pay attention to how to analyze domains. It matters for PBNs. It also matters for the links linking into the PBNs. This information is just it's really, really crucial. Yeah, and again, uh I, I literally just before we jumped on this uh, webinar, I just won a domain that I'm going to use as a money site. So you can also use these metrics to buy domains in order to use as your money site, not just in your network. Um, 
So uh, I managed to pick up an absolute stealer with a, a 30 trust flow and a 40 citation flow in the marketing niche. So, um, and, and, and actually I found that with Domain Hunter Gatherer. Um, so when looking for domains to be used in your network or to buy links or to use as your money site, there's four key metrics to look at, domain authority, page authority, trust flow, and citation flow. Now, I always want these metrics to be over 15 at a bare minimum. That does unfortunately make it pretty hard to find domains. It really does slim down your selection pool, but the domains are the heart and soul of your network, so you want the domains to be right always check these metrics are 15 and above. Now, sometimes people ask me, well, what if three of them are like at 15 and one's at 12? Well, in that instance, use your due diligence, look at the bigger picture. Okay, three are okay, one fails, it's probably gonna be okay for you. It's not a hard set of rules when you're looking at these metrics, but it really, you want a minimum of 15 across the board if you can get there. Now. Once you have got these metrics, we want to calculate the trust ratio. And the trust ratio is essentially taking the citation flow, dividing it by the trust flow to equal the trust ratio. Now, you might be wondering what the trust ratio is. Well, take a look at this graph right here. Um, this is from Majestic. And they actually went out and um, released a huge study of the top 1 million domains on the internet. And they found that the top 25 domains had an average trust ratio of 1.09. So that's 1.09 was the average trust ratio across the top 250,000 websites on the internet. And that gives us an important baseline. They found that the median average site, like the, the had a had a ratio of 1.81. So essentially, if if your if if the trust ratio was between zero and 1.81, it's a good quality domain. Anything above 1.81, it's starting to get spammy. So if you look at these examples on your screen right now at nine and 8.85 and you'll see that the graphs are heavily weighted down towards this citation flow area, we know that these domains are spammed and that we don't want to touch them. If you have a network already, go and run your domains through this check. Any domains that do not pass this test, cut them immediately because they're, they're, I, they're, uh, they're, more than you're, they're helping. Yeah. Does okay. I just want to preface what I'm about to say with a question, guys. See all those these charts, how they're made up of like basically little purple dots, right? And the more purple dots you put into an area, the thicker purple it gets. Does everybody know what those dots represent? Give me a one if you know what those dots are. Give me a two if you don't. Okay, we're about half and half here. Okay, so, so why don't you cover that a little bit? Yeah. So each each of the dots on 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 the graph, as, as some of you have, have, have answered, is, is backlinks. And the essentially, the higher trust the backlink is, you're going to get a little dot on this side. So this is low trust down here, and this is high trust up here. And then the citation, well, if you come over to um, Majestic, this is another uh, metric of how powerful the domain is. But it's very easy to get high citation flow links. It's very easy to live on this side of the graph, very easy. But that's a spammy side of the graph. And if you live on that side of the graph, you've got problems. What you really want to do is live right on this baseline up the middle um, or heavier into the trust flow. You certainly don't want to be here. And you certainly don't want to be calculating like this, dividing your citation flow by your trust flow and coming out with a number nine. You want to be coming out with something between zero and 1.81. Anything outside of those ranges is a risk. So this is what a good example looks like. You'll see 0.86 and 0.66, they sit well within that acceptable limit. And you'll see the graph here is much more balanced. If we go back, you'll see this was very weighted here, this is very weighted here. Whereas here, it's really nicely, balanced and smoothed out. 
that is the kind of domain you want, not just in your network, but the kind of domain you want to get a link from. There, I mean, this quick spot check right here will save you a ton of headache because sometimes you can buy a domain and all the metrics look good, the history looks good and everything else, but once you look at this, uh, you kind of start to see that, okay, all of the metrics look great, but in terms of how much it's trusted, uh, it's probably going to do you more damage than good. So, does everyone understand this check? We the the first of all retrieving the metrics for the domain, which you can do at Moz and Majestic, and then using the, the two Majestic metrics to calculate the trust ratio, and then what is an acceptable trust ratio. Everyone understand? Yeah, guys, that's that's majestic.com. Those metrics are, are where I mean, these are just pictures, but where the data is coming from is if you go to majestic.com, you can get that. You can sign up for a free account and do a, a, a limited number of those searches um, on Majestic for free. Yeah. Um, so once you have um, done these checks, what's nice to do is go and plug the domain that you're thinking to buy into archive.org. Um, a lot of you guys will know it, but uh, archive.org is just pretty much a collection of every website that ever existed on the internet and allows you to go back in time and see how websites used to look. Now, the check here going into archive.org, what we're looking for is consistency. So, if you've got a domain that was originally about dogs, and at some point it's, in its life it started talking about mobile phones, that's a domain to avoid because it's not a consistent topic and it's likely someone bought it to use in a private blog network and repurposed it at some point. It's not the kind of domain that you want in your network or really want to use in any way, shape or form. So we're looking for consistency. Archive.org, plug the domain in and just, just spot check it. Look, look back through some dates and some history and um, make sure there's consistency. And quite often you'll find here that domains fail this test. It can be tempting to kind of just ignore that and buy them anyway, but I highly recommend that you don't do that. Um, go in and do that check. If there's no consistency, walk away. I mean, it, it's just going to cause you more problems than it's worth. So really, that's the very easy way to find domains for your network. Um, I mean, it, there are more checks that you can do, but this is going to reveal like 99.9% .9 of problems, getting these metrics, doing this calculation, and then just checking the history on archive.org for consistency. So once you have a domain in your network, the next thing you need to do is host it. Now, it would be interesting to know, you guys on the webinar, how are you hosting your network right now? What are you doing for your hosting of your network? How many of you are using SEO hosts? Give me a number one if you're using an SEO host. An SEO host is a host that basically advertises it as an SEO host. Um, Easy Blog Networks isn't an SEO host. Or what about reseller hosting? Is anyone using reseller hosting to use their to, to host their network? Okay, so the the problem with SEO hosting um, like uh, A9 hosting and reseller hosting like IX hosting um, is you have a leak in your network. You have a footprint if you're using services like that. Um, the reason for that is you would have, you, you've probably all heard the common advice, oh, you should use a different C-class or B-class IP address for your network. And as long as you do that, you'll be fine. Um, that's bullshit. It's not true whatsoever. Um, the fact that you're, yes, host nine, you should not be using them. Um, if um, you're 
your IPs are all on different C classes and B classes, quite often what you'll find is if you go and look at who owns the IP addresses, the IPs have the same owner. And uh, Google, being a registrar, has access to that information. So they, despite being even different A, B, and C classes, if the IP addresses are owned by the same company, ah, okay, we don't understand C class and B class, I'll come back in a minute. For the, for the more experienced, even though the C class and B class and A class is different, if the IP address is owned by the same company, you've still got a footprint. And many people don't do that check. So I just want to, I really want you to pay attention to this part because there's a lot of, this is where I find a lot of problems where, where people host their network and I'm, I'm going to cover some of the most common problems. For the people that are asking what are uh, the difference between A class, B class, and C class. Um, one moment, I may have something already prepared that I can show you on the screen to explain that a little bit better. If you want, sorry Matt, if you want, like what we can do is I know you guys are like loving this and asking tons of questions and that's great, but if you want to just like get through your presentation, if you're willing to and if people want to stay on, we could do a Q&A after your presentation's done and that way you know you can focus on what you got to do and then everybody yeah. still gets to ask lots of uh, yeah. Q&A and, 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 and actually if you sign up for the videos, I answer the C class, B class question in detail um, with, with some visual examples as well and graphics to help you understand that a little bit more. Um, for the guys that do understand what it is, um, well pay attention because you've still probably got some problems. Um, so when hosting your network, I find tons of people cut corners here, um, like for example, put in lots of hosts on one network and they haven't even considered IP addresses or C classes, or they put all of their websites on one host and it's a type of host that offers unique C classes, B classes, and A classes. Um, if your host sounds like one of those, you should pay attention. Now, it's not the easiest way to, to host your network, but the best and safest way to host your network is to use a completely different host for every site in your network. Now, it can be tempting to put more than one site on a shared host to cut costs, but that is going to hurt you in the long term. You are begging for a penalty if you do that. And um, you can pick up hosting for like between one and four dollars per month. There's literally no reason to cut a corner when it comes to the hosting. It's so cheap. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And when you sign up to the free video series underneath the second video, I've actually got a list of super cheap one dollar web hosts, well one, two, three dollar web hosts for you to download to start hosting your network on. Um, another thing that you can do to find cheap hosting for your network is jump over to the webhostingtalk.org shared hosting offers forum and this is where many web hosts post their very best deals and you'll find if you visit that forum every day there'll be a completely new set of web hosts offering you super duper cheap hosting um, with all of the features that you need to host WordPress and you know we don't need like crazy fast SSDs or anything we just need a basic host that we can install WordPress on. So um, when you're building your network, I'm going to stress it again, one site per shared host. Never do more than one site per shared host. And you should be tracking all of that in a spreadsheet. I know the guys have already prepared a spreadsheet for you at the end of this webinar, but you should be tracking which host you're using for each site in your network, just to make sure that you never have any overlap. You always want to have a complete overview using a spreadsheet to make sure you've not got any problem whatsoever. Now, as long as you do that, that will eliminate about 95% of hosting problems. 
the other 5% of hosting problems you can find in the checklist that I share in the free video series. But for the most part, if you use a different shared host for every site in your network, you will not have a problem. If you use an SEO host or reseller hosting that offers different IP addresses on different C classes and B classes and A classes, well, I'm not saying you've definitely got a problem, but it's likely you've got a problem. And the way to check that is to go to www.who.is and enter the IP addresses of your private blog network and look for a footprint between the IP owners. You can find the uh, owner details of every IP address on the internet. And if more than one site in your network has the same IP owner, you've got a problem. You need to pay attention to that. You also want to enter your domain name into who.is and check if there is an SOA record present. If an SOA record, if the host publishes it, will be your email address. So um, that's a very hidden footprint that not many people are aware of. Who.is, plug your domain in and check that you've not got any SOA record showing an email address. And if it is showing an email address, make sure no two sites are showing the same email address. So check the IP owner and check the, by plugging the IP into who.is, and then check the SOA record by plugging the domain into who.is if you've got an existing network. If not, you don't need to worry about those two checks. So, the last part of building the process, uh, building the process, building the network, is building the site. Um, now, I could literally talk about building the actual private blog network sites all day long. This is where the most mistakes happen, and usually the mistakes are just through people's own laziness. So, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to give you a very quick summary of how I build the sites. But in the actual free training series, you'll get access to a sample site and much more detailed over my shoulder step by step instruction of how to build the sites the very right, uh, the, the right way. Um, is everybody following me so far? I can say this right now, guys. Like, I've tried to say so many times, there's absolutely zero chance of us being able to teach you everything about uh, building a PBN on a single webinar. It's literally impossible. Um, this this webinar is going to teach you a lot. You're going to get some tricks. Some of you some of you might feel overwhelmed by terminology and and by you know stuff like that, but really that's what the course is about. Um, so make sure you sign up. When we're going to drop that link, do you want to drop that link now just so that we can carry on? Do you guys want that link right now? Like Matt's going to carry on with his, his presentation and, and stay on it, um, but you're going to learn a lot more from those four videos. After those four videos, there will be um, on October 2nd, right, Matt, you are going to be releasing your PBN certification course. So what this is all leading up to, you guys, and I'll tell you this straight up right now, uh, the information you're getting today for free is for free. The four videos that you're going to get is going to be more detail of what you're learning today. Plus, there's going to be two extra videos. The four videos, sorry to interject, will teach you everything you need to know to find domains, host, and build your site safely, completely end-to-end. -end. And at the end of the videos, if you follow along, you'll have the first site in your network built, ready to go with all the knowledge that you need, with all of the checklists broken down easy step by step. Um, so that's 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 what you're signing up for with the free the free series. At the end, I'm going to pivot, and there is a more detailed course, but you don't need that. You'll have all of the knowledge, and we'll actually have everything you need to build the first site in your network at the end of the four free videos. Yeah, because we can't, we just can't teach it all on a single webinar, and that's why you know the training's good. And then if you want to go into high level detail and understand how to do this all, that's what the course is going to be for. So here I'm going to drop this link for you guys. If if you do want to go, there it is. I just dropped it. If you do want to go sign up for that course, but do stay on the webinar. Um, Matt's going to carry on, and we're going to do a a, a nice Q and A at the end as well. Okay. Sorry, so man. so um, no, thank you very much. Um, the the building part of your site, I mean, you've got the domain, you've got the hosting, we've installed WordPress, now we've got to build the site. Now, 
one of the common this is one of the biggest problems not only do people make mistakes they also hit major roadblocks here because people struggle with sourcing the content for their networks and how many of you publish content regularly to sites on your private blog network give me a number one if you publish content regularly on your private blog network that exists okay um, you don't need to do that. I've experimented with networks that I add content to and networks that I don't add content to and well there's no real difference. Um, so I build a site out with all of its content off day one and that's it. I don't keep adding content. I might add a piece of content if it was relevant to my link building campaign or the strategy had changed or, or, or you know I wanted to add a new link or maybe redirect my anchor text a little bit but other than that I'm not adding content regularly to sites in the network so uh, that tip alone should have probably just saved you guys possibly hundreds of dollars a month in sourcing content for your network um, that's for the people that have already got a network. For the people that haven't got a network yet and are thinking about building a network, I'm going to tell you right now that sourcing the content is going to be a roadblock for you, but luckily I have got the solutions. Um, the quickest and easiest way to do it um, is to outsource it. Now, if you've got the budget for around $60, you can outsource the content and it's very important that the content you outsource is not only unique but perfectly readable by a human we want it to be able to pass human review if it cannot pass human review you will regret that in the future so not everybody has the money to spend sixty dollars to outsource the content every time they build a new site so if you want to write the content yourself I'm going to give you like the super quickest easiest way to do it and that is to literally just jump over to BuzzSumo type in your niche find the top articles and then rewrite the articles like you've copied your friends homework at school uh, I'm sure a bunch of you used to do that when you had homework due and it wasn't ready and in the morning you'd be copying your friends homework but changing it so it was unique to, to fool the teacher um, essentially we're doing exactly the same thing except we're trying to fool Google and not the teacher so um, it was it's, it's BuzzSumo I think is it BuzzSumo.com or BuzzSumo.net I'm not 100% sure um, but just go Google it BuzzSumo type in your niche and rewrite the top articles in your niche um, that, that it comes back I find with that um, that process I can rewrite I can create a, a relevant high quality article every 10 minutes or so and for every site in your network at the very minimum you need four posts between 400 and 800 words that is the minimum and I'm gonna stress it minimum like really you want to be adding between 8 and 10 of around a thousand words but uh, if, if, if it really came down to it the minimum that you can get away with is four posts between 400 and 800 words um, but you should be in the business of building long-term business assets with your private blog network and when you think about building long-term business assets and you're, you treat your network in that way you're not gonna add four posts you're gonna take the time to add a little bit more but if you want to do the bare minimum four posts 400 to 800 words each is what you can get away with you can outsource that content you can actually just um, to, 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 to get better quality writers for cheaper you can use somewhere like 99centarticles.com or natashanixon.com and I will do the same process I'll go to BuzzSumo search for my niche find the top articles and then I'll send those articles to the writing service and tell them to rewrite them so they're unique and um, that really ups the content quality because that means the writer doesn't have to think they just need to rewrite and uh, you usually get very good quality articles at a very cheap rate if you do it that way um, so once you've sourced your content 
you need to publish it on your blog or the first site in your private blog network. Now, you also need to add static pages about me, contact, privacy policy, terms of service. Now, the about me page, I well, I'm not going to share it in the webinar. Um, in, in the second video, I'm going to show you the trick that I use on the about me page to pass a Google human review. And the reason I know that this passes a Google human review is from insider knowledge. And I know if the review team sees this one thing on your site, you will instantly pass a human manual review. So I'm going to share what that one thing is in the second video of the series. I highly suggest you integrate that one thing on every single site in your network. It will make you bulletproof. So you've got your content in your static pages. Now <laughs> yeah, I can leave it like that, Steve. If you want it, go sign up for it. Um, so when we're um, building the, the content, and, and guys, let me stress to you, these lessons that I'm giving you and these things I'm sharing, like I don't know this by accident. I know this because I learned the hard way. I built networks. I took every shortcut I could. If it could save 10 minutes or a couple of bucks, I'd do it. And you know what? Those kinds of networks work, they really do work, but they don't work for very long and eventually you get caught and, and traffic and money goes from looking very good to, to, to not very good overnight. So um, yeah, I've learned the hard way about how to build networks the right way. And when I say the hard way, I truly mean like losing five figures a month overnight the hard way. I've learned how to build private blog networks, so pay attention. Um, with just little, even just these little tidbits that I'm sharing with you, if you've already got an existing network, pay attention, go to your existing network and integrate what I'm telling you right here because um, I'm not telling you just for just for telling you sake. I'm telling you because um, yeah, I kind of like money and traffic and Google rankings, and I don't, I never want that to stop again. <laughs> so um, with our, our our content ready to go. Um, it's always important that you publish the content. First of all, don't link to your money site. And when you're publishing the content, I like to go a little bit above and beyond with um, some of the things that I do here. And I like adding in um, little things like videos, external links, images, things that would really make content look good and engage a reader, bullet points, headers, like a real genuine site. That's essentially what, what, we, what we're trying to build. Um, but some of you might already be doing that. But you really want to like go, uh, 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 like how, how, many, how many of you have blog networks that have comments on the articles? Give me a number one if your blog network has comments on the content. Okay, so if you go to a genuine website, it usually has comments, right? So one of the super quick things that you can do to add some authenticity to your network is just add fake blog comments. Just go down to the blog comment form, submit some different comments with different names, email addresses. Don't worry that it's all coming from the same IP address because Google can't see that. And then just go into the back end and approve them. You might want to tweak the dates and times a little bit. But, you know, actually like show some engagement on your site. Um, how many of you have like banner ads on sites in your private blog network? Um, that's, you know, a, a genuine site would have banner adverts on it. Um, so you need to be adding banner adverts to your sites at, at, at random. And um, there's a, 
I mean, I, I, in, in the videos, I'm going to talk to you a lot more about building your sites and all of these little, little very small things that I do that, that really make a big difference in um, building your network for the long term. And we want to be building our networks out as long-term business assets. And you must treat them like that. And um, I, I think when you start thinking about your private blog network as a long-term business asset, that should change your mentality and, and how you think about it um, a, li a little bit more. Um, so I just want to show you um, another case study here from the video games niche. Now, what's important about the video games niche and possibly a problem you guys face is that demand uh, changes for keywords over time as new products get released, old products kind of uh, are not important anymore, you know. Um, when the new iPhone comes out, people stop searching for the old iPhone. Well, that's a problem as an SEO because you've got a constantly moving target. Um, and private blog networks let us uh, hit that moving target every time. Now, in video two, you're also going to see this case study. Again, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and SEMrush in the video. Um, this site was originally had a penguin penalty. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with that. I've had more than my fair share of them in uh, over the years. Um, but this site was absolutely destroyed. So we deploy, deployed a private blog network in November 2014. And pay attention to these case studies because these aren't rank and bank case studies. These are long-term uh, long term case studies because we've built the networks to be long-term business assets. So this um, this site actually had 8,000 visitors a month, and right now, um, as of 31st of August, it is getting over 200,000 visitors a month from Google. Um, that was after the private blog network was deployed way back here. Um, around three years ago and you can see how the site has enjoyed significant growth since then for nearly five million visitors and uh, take a look at some of the click-through rates on these keywords that are getting insane impressions and insane clicks and um, well uh, even I'm pretty jealous looking at that, even though it was uh, my strategy that's, that's responsible for, for those rankings. I wish I had those rankings, right? Who, who else who else would, would like those kinds of rankings and impressions and, and click-through rate? Um, I mean, well, I wish I could reveal what I know what those terms are. And, uh, yeah, it, it's seriously impressive. Um, now, with the video games niche, um, it's a moving target, right? Call of Duty 1 was super popular until Call of Duty 2 came out. Um, some of you might know that actually I was a professional gamer way back when. Um, I came back like 15, 16 years, won a bunch of money in tournaments. Um, and actually the reason I built my first website ever was to share videos of people competing online in professional gaming tournaments because we didn't have YouTube to share videos then. So um, that was actually the first site I ever built. Um, so the video games niche, how we tackle this anchor text strategy, and this is written under the video here uh, for your reference, is every time a new game in a series is released, so let's say Battlefield 3 is the most popular game right now, and Battlefield 4 is then released, well, what do we do? Well, there's a few things that we do across the network. One thing that we'll do is we'll go in and ex edit existing links in the network. So we'll have a Battlefield 3 review, and we'll just literally go in and edit the links to point to the new review. It's the most lazy way. It's not the best way. But we will do that for a portion of the sites in the network. The other thing that we do, in, rather than just editing the link, is we might add two or 300 words to an existing post on the network. Um, talking about the upcoming release of Battlefield 4, and then we add a link there. Or the other way that we do it is we will just create a new page entirely on the, uh, and this is the only time we would add content to uh, new content to the network, is when we add a new page to target the new game entirely. So we might have the Battlefield 4 review on one of the sites in our network, linking 
to our money site. And that's how we deal with keywords when we're in a niche and the target is con constantly moving with where keyword popularity changes. Um, any of you people that are in product-based rankings um, will suffer from this problem. So um, a private blog network really allows you to overcome that problem and, uh, and, and, and give you complete control uh, over, over the rankings as those targets move, so does your link building strategy. So, um, if you come to video two here, I explain so much more than what I can possibly explain on this webinar with you now. You should also watch video one. And um, video three is actually going to be released tomorrow and video three is basically a collection of my biggest mistakes it's going to be a uh, we're going to take a deep dive into footprints and this is essentially of a list of all of the things that can get you penalized and get you caught and you're also going to get the checklist that I use to stay penalty free and completely safe uh, with my network and so you don't want to miss that but right now you can go out and check out tutorial one. I highly recommend you check that out. Even if you know what private blog networks are, just play it in the background. There are some bits of information you need before you watch video two. And as you move into video two, I'm going to share with you the technique to pass a manual review, the one thing that every site in your network needs, along with a lot of other little things that I do to make my uh, sites look authentic, and how to avoid a lot of the gotchas when buying a domain and hosting it. So, um, oh, I nearly forgot. Um, I'm also going to completely blow your mind. I showed you two case studies, right, from the first video and the second video. Well, that's just two. I've got like 11. This one we've already seen. Let's not bore you with that one. Video games niche we've seen. Right now, we've got here. Here's one in the sports book niche, uh, a very popular great commissions, personal finance. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the commissions here. I'm going to show you a case study there. We have live logins into Google Analytics Search Console. Uh, one in the survival goods niche, an e-commerce site making good revenue here. Uh, a site in the diet and health niche that went to 1.3 million visitors and 2.3 million. As you can see, they fucked up the Google Analytics install code. Otherwise, I would have had this as like the featured case study, um, but it kind of looks a bit crappy there when the analytics code um, they deployed an update to the site and stupidly didn't take care of analytics um, but it's pulling down 2.3 million visitors per month in the health niche um, and you can see all the kind of stuff from SEMrush here we've got massage certification this is a local SEO case study in the local SEO world any of you guys in local SEO I will show you the power of private blog networks there we've got payday financing and a bunch of other case studies I'm, I'm not gonna bore you and go through them all but once you sign up to the free video series you're gonna get access to all of those and more so, I've been Matthew Woodward. Um, I hope that I've answered um, a lot of your questions. We're going to do a live Q&A right now. Um, I kind of shared some of my SEO mistakes with you. Um, I was quite upfront about some of the, <laughs> the errors I've made, so um, it'd be interesting if you could uh, perhaps share some of your SEO mistakes as well. I always like to hear them because uh, usually I facepalm and kind of think, oh yeah, I've made that mistake as well. <laughs> so um, right now in the chat, I'm going to hand it over to Herc, but ask any questions and share your biggest SEO mistakes. And uh, if you've learned anything, let me know. Um, thanks for listening to me drone on for the past hour. <laughs> All right. Um, before we go, guys, I've got the link up on the screen if you want to sign up for Matt's for, uh, for video course. It's projectsupremacy.com slash PBN hyphen certification. The link is also in your chat box. Let me see if I can drop it one more time. No, I can't. Wait a minute. Come on now. Let me see if that works. Let me just send this. No, that was shit. Let me grab it for you. It's like I'm new. Oh, I've got stuff to show you. <laughs> you guys want to see some PBM shit from me? Yes. 
show you the power of a PBN in a real case study that you can actually uh, you can actually take advantage of. There's the link. That's what. We're okay, I'm dropping the link in the chat box again. There you go, guys. And then for all those that are on the today. <laughs> yeah, all, all those case studies that Matt showed you guys, you'll get when you sign up um, for the for the free course. So you'll be able to like look at all that stuff and like analyze it. It's really really cool. But I wanted to show you guys, um, and someone asked the question, where was it? Christopher Totten just asked, how many PBN sites should I link to my money site? And I kind of want to show you. That's actually kind of what I'm going to show you, Christopher, which is kind of cool. So um, let's start here, okay? You guys have all seen PSV3 before. I created two new posts on um, how to make money with Bitcoin.net. Let me. Um, it's it's. You guys all know I love um, cryptocurrencies and shit like that. So I have a PB or not a PB and a money site called How to Make Money with Bitcoin.net. And I created two new groups with V3 because I wanted to target a bunch of keywords for two programs that I'm involved with. So I wanted to write a review page. So this one's uh, a review of a company called USI Tech. This one's a review of a company called BitClub Network. So um, here you can see the keywords we're targeting for each of those pages, USI Tech Review in a couple different formats, the, the company name USI Tech, and you can see the search volume of some of these things. 22,000 searches a month, I'm already on page 14. Um, for USI Tech Review, which is my main money keyword I'm going after, I'm already number six. And then if you put a space in it, I'm number eight. Over here on uh, BitClub Network Review, my main keyword, I'm already number five. And uh, then other keywords like mining with BitClub Network Review or BitClub Network Mining and shit like that. And then the big keyword, BitClub Network for the company itself, um, 33,000 searches a month. I'm already on page two at number 18. Now, how long did it take to get there? What did I have to do with PBNs in order to do that? Um, number one, I had to optimize my page properly to, to rank for those keywords. And then number two, I had to build some backlinks. All right. Um, so let me open up my backlink sheet. I'll actually show you the backlinks that I built for that site and uh, the spreadsheet also that I use to uh, to track everything. All right, here you go, guys. So basically how this works, this is the PBN that I'm using. These are the PBNs I'm using, the domain authority, the page authority. I don't even really use these anymore um, because I just, it doesn't matter. The date that I built the link, the anchor text that I use, the domain target, but uh, more importantly, the URL target. Uh, the reason I have domain target here is just so that I can select it by domain and then I can see all the URLs. I can't use that filter if I don't do that. Um, and then I have a couple of other things that I'm slowly not using as much. If it was a post or if it was a, a footer link or a widget link or a, a site-wide link, my target keyword, my position, and my top. Shit like that. I don't really track that much anymore. But here's the point. What did it take me to rank? this well for these terms, okay? This is where I started building links for USI Tech. This link right here that's highlighted. I built on September 5th and I linked it to USI Tech Review. My, my anchor text was USI Tech. The second link I built two days later, okay? And I linked it to the same page and I used almost the same term. I used USI Tech Review and that's it. I built two links from two PBN sites to that particular page right here and this is the ranking result of that, right? Yeah, only two videos are active right now, Steve. We've mentioned that a few times. Video three comes out tomorrow. Video four comes out a few days after that. Sorry, back to the presentation. So it took me two links, guys, to this page. Number one, I built the page, optimized it. Um, number two, I built two links within two days of each other, and within 30 days, I'm already on the number one. Um, I'm on the first page of Google for multiple keywords, and I'm coming up fast for huge, huge volume keywords with two links. If I build three more links, guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bump all that up. And then I did it again with uh, BitClub Network View, Review. I created a page. I created the keywords I wanted to rank for. Okay. And then what links did I build? BitClub Network Review right here. Okay. Right to that page using BitClub Network Review as an anchor text. I built another link. That, so the first one was September 6th. September 8th, I built another link just using BitClub Network as my anchor. Okay, and that's it. Two links to that page, two links to the other page. Both of those terms are on page one. See how powerful that is, guys, and how fast it can happen? And the fact is I can build a link, right, because I have a huge network of sites, and you guys are seeing all my PBNs here, which is fine. I shouldn't do that on webinars, but 
Uh, maybe I'll edit it out for the replay, and you guys are awesome that you're on live. You get to see it. Um, but I'm, I'm in complete control. I control what the anchor text is. I control where the link goes. I control when the link shows up. If I need the link to disappear, I can make it disappear. That's the point of having a PBN network. Number one, it works badass, but number two, you're in total, total control. Right? Does everybody get that? Do you guys want to yeah, see what one of the links? Control is the like the main benefit of a private blog network for me. Like the control. And when someone tells me they built a private blog network and they got penalized, it just it's like, well, you were in control, so it's your fault. <laughs> and uh, you know, that that's that's one of the, 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 the main benefits of a private blog network is a control. Uh, sorry. No worries. I'm just I'm going way deeper, guys, here. I'm showing you the actual one of the PBNs that I built a link from. So Hammy Hamster. And what I did, so the way I do things is a little bit different than 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 what Matt's gonna teach you guys. He's probably teaching you a more uh, a more relevant and targeted method. But the way that I built things, guys, um, like Hammy Hamster has nothing to do with Bitcoin mining. It's so far out there, it's not a relevant blog. So meaning all the links that are coming into Hammy Hamster, to all the links that are giving Hammy Hamster its authority and its trust and its relevancy are about a, a TV show for kids called Hammy Hamster, right? So why do or how do I put a Bitcoin um, net link on this site? Well, I write an article that's relevant to what Hammy Hamster was about, and I connect it to the subject of Bitcoin. So. Uh, or Hemi Hamster was a TV show, so I was like cryptocurrency mining using using an Android box, which is a TV box. So you can see the article is actually the subject matter of the article is talking about television, so that it's still relevant content to the PBN. But I'm tying in Bitcoin mining into that. So how can you mine Bitcoin on your television? And that's how I'm creating those two relevant relevancy points. Would it have been been better if this PBN was a PBN about currencies? Or investments, or something closely more related to the the anchor text in the building. Yes, of course it would have. It would have been far far better as a relevancy score. But if you don't have that option because Bitcoin mining and shit is relatively new, maybe it'll you'll have a hard time finding a PBN. This is a way to do it. Every and I'll, 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 I'll interject here. Yep. This is actually how I how I teach it in the course. Um, that you, you you find a powerful domain and you make domains relevant through content. Um, and actually, in in the, the 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 private Facebook group, we have quite a running thread, uh, like a bit of a, a joke, where uh, people challenge me to connect two niches. They'll come out with two niches and say, "Okay, come up with the article title that will connect those two niches." And uh, I've not failed yet, but I can see you've done. You would pass the test very well with this as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like our VA. We have a VA that that builds for us now, and that's his definitely his biggest challenge. We're always. We always keep the topic. This is a very important point right here, guys. Hammy Hamster was a tele kids' television programming site. Okay, that was the original content of the PBN, and I looked that up on the Wayback Machine, and I can even show you that. Let me let me kind of just go a little bit into that, um, and I'll show you. You guys will like this shit, and this is all in the course too. But I'll just show you. So you can go to this Wayback Machine archive.org, okay, and type in Hammy Hamster. Uh, I think it was. Let me just grab the URL, hammyhamster.com. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the history of the site. What was it way back when? Okay. So you can see how 1998 is when it first showed up. So I'll just go to 2000 since there's a lot of uh, entries here. And you can take a look at the snap at the snapshot of snapshot of the site back in March 3rd, 2000 through the Wayback Machine. This is a super powerful tool, super helpful, and it happens to be free. Um, and you can see Hammy on TV. So I knew right away by just looking at this page, okay, Hammy Hamster was a TV site, um, you know what I mean? So I need to keep this PBN themed as a television site. So it doesn't matter what I'm linking out to, the article is going to talk about television. So that when I have, you know, when I have like 15 or 20 different blog posts on here, every one of them is still about television, right? The laptop most television producers choose but the link is for the best laptop under $5,000. Do you guys get the point there? Keep your PBNs themed the way they were, then the links that are coming into them will stay relevant, your PBN stays relevant, and you'll be able to link out with relevancy still. And I, something, I, I play in the, the gambling and 
the sports book niches a lot. And actually, what we found is um, the irrelevant domains are more powerful than relevant domains in the gambling niches. Now, that sounds ridiculous. How can an irrelevant domain be more powerful than a relevant domain? Well, SEOs have a history of abusing things, and we have heavily abused the gambling industry over the years, especially with private blog networks, and uh, lots of other shady schemes and other things as well. And actually, what's happening right now in that niche is Google inherently distrusts any domain to do with gambling. And because it distrusts the domain so much, the links coming from those domains have little to no value, even though they're highly relevant. So that means if I've got a domain with exactly the same metrics in the gambling niche and another domain with exactly the same metrics in the mummy blog niche, the mummy blog domain is more powerful to rank a gambling site simply because of how much Google distrusts every domain in the gambling niche. Um, now, that, that only applies in the gambling niche. Don't be you know, going too crazy with that. But that's what I found, that, um, it, it, that it can be in some niches that, that, that relevance is like going to kill you. And uh, if, you, if you've got any affiliate sites in the gambling niche, I urge you to stop using gambling related domains in your network immediately. Um, I see some people who give me a one if you guys are trying to access Hammy Hamster but you can't. <laughs> yeah. I I've, I've got it blocked you guys. I don't I don't allow people to look at my PDNs. Um, I can see my PDN, I can load it anytime but most people um, I have it blocked so that when you guys access that URL, it just it, it 404s. So that's why that's why you guys are having issues. That's Todd's plug in guys, Spider Spanker. Nuke. Which is covered in the course. Um in, in yeah, Spider Spanker Nuke. That's it's it, also it, in it's in Matt's course. Yeah. All right, so that's that's basically what I wanted to show you guys, like how quickly can can it happen with PBNs and you know like how to rank, you know high traffic keywords. Um, and and here's another thing too, guys. By the way, obviously those weren't the only links I built to this site, right? We're, we talk, we were talking about four links, these four right here. Okay, I built those four links to rank that particular page, but I've also been building other links to other pages and. One thing you guys need to know is that every link that I'm building into this site is increasing the power of the site overall. So like later on, let's say I built 50 links to this site and I just put up new content and I don't even need to build a PBN link at that point because the site has so much trust and so much power from all the past linking that I've done that all I have to do is put up new content, optimize it, and it has a far better chance of ranking. So that's another kind of a lot of people don't talk about that. They think that you need to like constantly build PBN links to every new piece of content that you put up, and that's not true. No, 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 yeah. not, not at all. And um, yeah. just another, uh, I've just seen Derek ask a question um, about ranking local sites. Are PBNs powerful enough for that? One of the case studies that I'll share with you is a local site in, uh, well, I'm not going to tell you where, but it's a local site in a very big international city. Um, and... PBNs are often overlooked when it comes to local SEO and I actually find in local SEO because they're overlooked you have a very big opportunity and can do significant damage with just one or two links in the local SEO even in the competitive real estate and insurance areas. Um, so I wanted to just address that directly um, because it's important. It's, it's, it's an overlooked area of using private blog networks. Uh, okay, have you guys, is there any, I guess we can do a live Q&A, um, if you guys have yeah, got any questions you'd like me to, to 
to jump through, um, ask away, and uh, I'll do my best. While you guys are typing in your questions, um, one of the things I'll mention really quickly is that I can't tell you how many local sites that I've built that only take like one to three links, and if it's a little bit tougher of a local site, it'll take like five links. But what makes it about local? It's even easier in local because it's obviously a less competitive niche than affiliate or less competitive area of marketing than affiliate. And you guys are probably having light bulbs going off in your head right now, all you SERP tech people, right? Because we have these big sites ranking for hundreds of keywords, and I kind of touched on this yesterday. And if, you're, if you just heard what Matt said about local sites are easier, and you heard what I said about um, when you're building links into your site, everything benefits. You guys should be thinking about this with your SERP tech sites. You really want to give your SERP tech sites, you want to light those things on fire, start building a couple links in a local niche to a SERP tech site, and you will literally start like just dominating. Okay. Okay, so let me take a look at some of the questions flowing through. Scroll up a little bit. Um, how many links maximum do you recommend putting on each blog by Wayne? Um, there's no real hard and fast rule there. I tend to only link to my money site once per PBN site, but that is not a hard and fast rule. Um, you can get away with linking to it more than once, but uh, personally, that's the way I I do things. Um, why are why are auction domains better than expired domains? Uh, they're essentially the same thing. One has no advantage over the other, except auction domains usually are more expensive. I just paid a quite ridiculous amount of money for a domain. Um, that I would I, well, I'll actually build a money site and, and brand on it, um, but it offers no benefit over an expired domain that I could have picked up for seven dollars, other than the fact it's uh, brandable. Um, Can I make a point on that, just real quick, Matt, yeah. to you on, on auctions versus expired guys. Auctions typically are more expensive because typically they're going to have a little bit more power in them because all the there's so many SEOs out there that are scraping everything. We're, they're all scraping everything. And it's harder to pick up an expired domain with good metrics than it is to get into an auction just because everyone's scraping everything and grabbing them. Yeah, that's true. And um, they are uh, actually um, with expired, uh, sorry, domain hunter gatherer. Um, that's really, I found to be a, a, a nice little tool to, to pick up the cheap domains, but there's no benefit, there's no benefit, it's cost, it's cost in the end of it, and you can find, you can pick up an auction domain for $12 that no one bids on, and you can register an expired domain for $12, just like a new domain, so there's uh, no real um, benefit over one in the other in the end. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. Any footprints to really watch out for? Yeah, I've got a whole list. Um, all of them are footprints to watch out for. There's not one footprint that's more important than the other. Your entire network is only as strong as its weakest link, and the weakest link is usually a footprint, no matter how small it is. With video three, I'm going to put out kind of 9 a.m. CST tomorrow. That will include my footprints checklist to keep you safe. Um, but every footprint is important. Pay attention to every single one of them. Um, if a competitor is using something to block bots on their PBN, is there any way to still find their PBNs? Um, you can try some obscure backlink checking tools, but it's likely if they've taken those steps to protect their network, it's next to impossible for you to find that yourself. Um, so don't worry about what your competitors doing there. If you know they've got a network, well, you've just got to build a better network. Um, how can PBNs use to be help a business local branch offices? Um, assuming uh, DK, if you just respond respond with a example keyword, I will come back to that. Um, any benefits using CDNs such as Cloudflare? Yeah, it kind of helps you mask your IP, but you can get greedy and lazy and create a footprint there if you start doing it too much. So it's not something that I do. 
myself, can you repeat the recommended hosting forum again? That is webhostingtalk.org and they have a shared hosting offers forum that you can find. Um, how much of a footprint is a registrar? Who is? Um, pay attention to video three tomorrow for uh, detailed answers to that. Um, can your money site be an Amazon affiliate listing? Yes, you can rank Amazon affiliate uh, pages in Google search results. Um, not many people know this, but I'm actually a master of the Amazon search results as well, the actual internal Amazon search ranking. Someone paid me a bunch of money to figure that out. And the interestingly, the, the biggest thing is not included in any of the big expensive $2,000 Amazon courses you may have bought. Um, to build a link to build, so how many websites does PBN have and do you have all of them? Where they, where you say build a link to site from to the PBN. Rick, I don't understand your question, sorry. Um, do you point links to home page or category pages? Uh, a mix, home page, category, and inner pages, you should never. Uh, a good rule, and you guys will probably like this rule, especially you guys from Manchester, um, and anyone from England, a, a good rule to follow when building your network is build it like you're drunk, like you drunk a bottle of vodka. You should be wasted when you build your network. Um, That'll help you avoid making this, doing the same thing twice and be completely random. And that applies to your link building strategy as well. So, um, I've never feel, heard that one before. Yeah, feel, feel free to uh, chug down. Yeah, your network should be built like you drink a bottle of vodka. That's pretty much, you know, um, it should be kind of slurred, incoherent, um, no real pattern or any sense whatsoever. <laughs> um, Where's the best place to get $5 articles? NatashaNixon.com or 99CentArticles.com. You should go to um, uh, find existing articles and just ask them to rewrite them to make it quick. Um, after getting a good domain. After getting a good domain, is it possible to bypass the learning curve and buy good PBN sites or hire someone to create it? Great question. Um, it's best to hire someone, give them access to the PBN training and have them build it how you uh, want it to be. Um, I've not found a complete service that builds them how I like, but there are services out there, uh, Costa PBN being one of them that do. Yeah, it's an okay job. It's a baseline. It's something to work with. Um, but there's no one that builds it right that I found just yet. Um, how about using Google Chrome in your business? You shouldn't be using any Google product if you're an SEO uh, for obvious reasons. Um, how big of a network? How big of a network should you build when you're starting out? Great question. I, depending on the niche, if it's super competitive, I'll start with five sites. If it's not competitive at all, I'll start with three. And from there, you usually get a baseline of kind of uh, how many sites you'll need. Those three sites, usually you're going to see significant movements in the rankings, as we've just seen earlier. Um, but start with two. Well, you could get away with two on an easy niche, but I always start with three. Um, and that gives that let me know what I need to do from there because every niche and site reacts differently. Do you cover how to combat negative SEO, bad PBNs linking to money site? Um, the only way you can really combat that is with disavow, but by contributing to disavow, you're actually making SEO's lives difficult. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, Usually you can combat bad links with good links. Um, for you, what you guys might not know is that the latest Penguin update kind of changed how they penalized people. And previously when Penguin penalized for, well, before Penguin, if there was a bad backlink, Google ignored it. After Penguin, if there was a bad backlink, that was a negative vote. That was the significant change with Penguin. Uh, bad backlinks suddenly became negative votes. What the latest Penguin update did, uh, because of negative SEO, which uh, Google never officially acknowledged, but because of that, they went back to the old way of doing things by ignoring um, bad backlinks. So to have a bad backlink-based penalty right now with Penguin, 
you need to be like really fucked up. You need to be in a bad place. Um, so that's um, and if you paint to the power, if you understand the power of observation and listen to what I just said there, there's um, a lot for you to chew on if you just think about that for a second in 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 that change that happened with the latest penguin. Um, would it make sense to do a 301 redirect from PBN URL? Um, in this case, what I like to do is if you're going to buy a domain and then 301 it to your money site, what I actually like to do is build a site for a short period of time, a couple of months, let it just um, index up, and then 301 it. Um, I tend to have better results doing that. 301s, just straight direct 301s for me have been hit and miss. Um, whereas building a site first, just letting it sit there for a while, and then three we aren't one in it um, that has only been hit um, so uh, well that comes up to the end of the questions and I guess the end of the webinar um, so if you guys would like to come down the rabbit hole further with me that I highly suggest that you do because it's going to be a great adventure the four videos are going to teach you um, everything you need to know to build the first site in your network sourcing the domain sourcing the hosting sourcing the content putting it all together in a way that will pass a manual review and putting your first backlink to your money site you're going to learn all of that for free in the four videos um, I am of course going to pivot and try and sell you a course at the end of it um, but you don't need that what? everything you need yeah we're like marketers and stuff <laughs> um, and you're gonna get a bunch of downloads and and uh, and the, the, really the most valuable thing that you're gonna get is that footprint checklist um, even if you've got an existing network I guarantee if you run through that you're gonna find problems I will be surprised I? if you don't can I talk a little bit about the course, having gone through it and taken it? Um, you guys, obviously, you guys know that we'll give you guys a bunch of free content and shit like this, but there's usually an offer at the end of it, and the offer is coming later on uh, in a few days um, from that. But the the course, it's it, what it is. It's this right here. It's the PBN specialist, uh, the the certified private blog network specialist, and the way that Matt's laid it out is completely unique. I, I've I've not seen anything quite like it before. It's really really cool. Um, it's very, very logically laid out. It's very, very high-level detail. It's got videos, but it's also got the, the PDF files or the transcription of all the videos that I know you guys love so much. But it's also laid out like this, okay? It's, it's an actual course that prevents you from just, like, whipping through it. You have to actually study the course material for each section and then take a small little test to prove that you've really... Um, absorb the material you have to pass that test in order to get to the to the next level now I'm not saying the tests are gonna be hard and you're gonna fail a bunch of times it's like a four question test it's just like are you paying attention sort of shit you could probably guess your way through it and pass it but it still it, it helps it helps organize you it helps make sure you're absorbing the information um, so each section has that and you have to follow through each section pass the test then you get the next section released to you you still get to do it at your own speed okay if you want I went through it in a day okay and I got through everything in a day um, but if you want to take two weeks, go ahead, take two weeks. And then at the end, the really, really cool thing is that there's a bigger quiz on the entire course subject that when you take that quiz and you're done and you pass your exam, if you get a passing grade, which is a, a, a high grade, it's like, what do you have, like 75% or something to pass? or I think, 80, something like that. I think the final certification is 85. And um, yeah, yeah. There's no bullshit but, in those questions. <laughs> yeah, like, and then when you take the test, guys, and you pass, he's actually got it hooked up so that you do receive this little symbol here that, that you've become with your name on it. You get a nice little card um, that you're you're certified. You're PBN Network Specialist certified. So it's just kind of a little bragging right that you can use as well. So it's just, it's a really well put together course. It's It, it covers literally everything um, you need to know about PBN. So if you found today's information useful at all, you're going to absolutely love that course. So make sure you grab the free info, guys, from this link, and then when um, the course comes out, make sure you pick it up. At, because if you feed a man a fish, you can feed him for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, you can feed him for a lifetime. And um, uh, actually, 
you, you get a full blown certificate. I don't know how to grab the screen, but if um, I you would show my screen right now, you would see this is the physical certificate that you will receive um, with your name on it and through the post. And actually, this isn't the only thing I'm going to send you through the physical mail. Um, I'll send you another surprise as well. Um, I've really I'm famous for the free content I've put out because of its quality. Um, this is just another level. Um, as explained, the, the way it's laid out, there's multiple exams to make sure that you know the subject. Um, I, I'm interested in, in, in producing students that produce results. Um, there's a reason if you go on my blog, there's like 200 testimonials of people having great success. Um, and I've laid this course out to make sure that you'll be the next success story and um, receiving like little things like the physical stuff, uh, like receiving certificates in the post and uh, some other little surprises and twists I've got in there. Um, it's it's, it's going to be like nothing else you've ever taken part in. I guarantee you that in, in, the, in, the, in the digital marketing world. Um, so, yeah, sign up for the free videos. And uh, I, I dispel huge amounts of knowledge in, 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 in those. Yeah, guys, I got one of those little certificates myself, so it's, uh, it's a good course. I highly recommend it. Uh, as you guys probably know, um, you know, I started building these things before they had a name. Uh, I started back in 2003, 2004. Um, I think, I think uh, me and Keith Baxter, I ran it all across him. And and he was called that blog farming and and uh, we had some other crazy names for it and then uh, over the years it finally just became um, PBNs private private blog private blog network but can't I can't say uh, enough about them uh, you know being, turn out bad I guess I guess and right <laughs> <again>. <laughs> but, but guys I, I swear to God I've been doing this uh, PBN stuff for about 14 years. And uh, they've never failed me. They've never let me down. Um, I've been teaching how to do it for years. There's another very large group on the Internet that, that I taught everything that I knew uh, about PBNs. And, and I also took Matthew's course. And it's very, very well laid out, like Herc said. And uh, I just can't uh, recommend it enough if you guys really want to learn how to, to get into PBN building. And it's not as hard as... You know, some people claim it is, or it's not that technically challenged. I know a lot of you guys on this call have Cert Tech. That means you know how to install WordPress. That means you know how to install plugins. That means you know how to set up hosting. That's really the only technical part about it. Now, there are some fine details that you're going to learn inside the course, such as uh, domain registrations, you know, uh, how you discuss IPs, uh, you know, how to, how to cover your footprints. That's probably... Uh, some details that you need to know, but they're not really that technical. It's just understanding what to do with your own two fingers. Um, the technical part, I promise you, you guys already know how to do that. And I just mentioned them, and I know a lot of you are CERC tech owners, and so if you figure that one out, then this is going to be a walk in the park, trust me. Does, does anybody need the link still? I'm seeing people saying, what's the link? Um, give me a one if you need the link, and then I'll post it to you privately because I'm not understanding. We, we posted it in the group for you. I'll do it again. Okay, good. It seems like everybody has a link that needs it. But um, let's end her there, guys. We're almost at the two-hour mark. Um, I will put up a replay, guys. And what I'll do is I'll put up the replay on the same link that you're signing up for the free course for, all right? And what I'll just do is I'll turn it into a replay of this webinar, and then I'll put a button underneath the replay so that you can still go grab the free course. So um, it's going to be the same link, projectsforemc.com slash PBN certification. And we're going to mail you about 14,000 times about this one, so just be prepared for the onslaught of email that's coming up. <laughs> It's good shit, guys, and PBNs, PBNs are, are just, it's the one big thing that Todd and I haven't really covered in, in full detail, and to be honest, the reason why is because it's such a big thing. It takes so much time to put together a good PBN course, and we just can't do it 
we have too much other shit on the go with with Project Supremacy and Serp Tech now and Local Supremacy. So Matt um, actually having this course at this time is so good for us um, to be able to still be able to deliver that content to you guys in a manner that we really trust and, and we know you guys are going to get um, the good exactly. education that you need. And it saves us a ton of time. Yeah. And you know we'll be stacking the cool along the way here with some bonuses and some extra stuff um, that, that we use and some other resources and things like that to, uh, to help you guys out with that. <laughs> Martin, I can't just send one email, man. It's just, it's just not possible. You can just delete it, though. You can press one button and it's it's gone forever. You can delete. Sorry, dude. It's like if we just I'm send not... one. If we just send one, we get griped at about they didn't get it. Yeah. And so it's like okay, so you know we we'll send reminders to those that don't get it, and and I know I know that that, that can annoy some of you. But uh, just bear yeah. with us. You know, you know we don't do this very often. It's like being a freaking politician. You just can't please everybody, and we do the best we can. You know, don't hate <laughs> us. Don't hate us. We're gonna email you. Hopefully that you'll like what we send. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Say Bye, thanks guys. to Matt for coming on. Yes. Yeah, thank you, for, thank you for having me. It's been great. Um, if you guys have got any other more questions, uh, underneath each of these three videos is a comments box. Just ask your questions there if you think of any after this webinar, and I'm, I'm here to help you. I'm, I'm looking forward to making you guys, uh, hopefully, one of my next success stories, a featured case study, and a testimonial. That would be great. So thank you for joining us. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. I want one message. Okay, guys. So I guess here, here comes all the thank yous to Matt. So that's cool to see. Glad you guys really enjoyed everything. Cool, 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 cool. All right, guys. We'll have a great rest of your week, and uh, we'll we'll speak soon. More webinars next week, of course. Take care. Bye bye.